What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, everybody out there? It's Phil20, and I'm back with another. Wi Fi, Netgear, mobile hotspot router update here. Uh, this is my first update on the mobile hotspot router, which is a Nighthawk. And I've done some other Nighthawk stuff, which is pretty fun. Um, you guys seem to enjoy seeing the video, so I'm going to make another one. Somebody sent me a message on my uh, email, so I figure that I could help this person out. It's pretty simple. So, I may uh, skip some scenes to get to the section, but you can see I'm going to go to settings right here. First, you're going to go to uh, ATT Wi-Fi Manager um, what you're going to want to do is absolutely uh, want you to know that this is going to be like resetted from, to factory default settings from this point. Nothing's been done. This is totally factory default settings from the M2, actually. So I actually have this. He, uh, he she sent me a message, and uh, this one's from uh, an AT&T one. So we're connected to it. Uh, it says not secure, but it's... There's nothing else connected to it. It uh, doesn't have a SSH address, which is pretty common for all routers. Uh, all routers don't have SSH address, and then it won't say secure, and that's pretty typical. But so you're going to go and you, once you get logged in, first you got to get logged in, uh, and that will get you to most likely you're going to type in 192.168.1.1. And it'll bring you here and I've already so you can come here and type in 192.168.1.1 that's gonna give you your addresses that you're working with and then it's gonna pull up this page here which I'm gonna cover up some stuff uh, it's got sensitive data on here and I'm gonna go over here on the top left hand corner and click on settings and again, there's more sensitive data here that I'm going to cover up. So once I get to this point, this is where I'm going to find port forwarding, which is here. By default, it's not enabled. And I'm going to enable it. So what I need to do to enable it is click on the check mark and then to apply a port forwarding address i'm going to click on add and the rule name i could name it uh zelda if it's for the zelda video game or i could name it uh everquest etc 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 so we're going to name this bob and the ip address so whatever the device that bob is going to be let's say it's the nintendo so what you're going to go to do is go to your device on your Nintendo, look at your settings, find out the address of Bob, and then put it here. You're also going to want to make that the static address for Bob. So uh, you need to make that address static for the device. And you'll have to enter that address manually in settings of setting up your Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So let's say it's 192.168.1. One dot ninety five. Okay, and then let's say it's uh, port eighty, and that's it. I'm not suggesting that you use port eighty. And then there's a protocol. Um, you should want to look up the protocol that this is being used. If you're having difficulty in one, try the other protocol. Uh, it, so you you sh you've got to understand. Just adding a port isn't particularly the best idea if you don't know what's going on. Opening up your ports allows you to be attacked by DDoS attacks in the future if you're not particularly careful. I, for one, have zero ports open on my network. And this is only something that I would suggest for you to do for like a video game console. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't suggest doing this on your computer or, uh, I mean, if you're building a server and you absolutely have to run the server at your house, then uh, that'd be fine, I suppose, if you wanted to 
study networking but this is where you do it so you're going to click on add um, so it's going to have our new added entry new entry added so bob is now applied on port 80 of the tcp protocol and the address is 192.168.1.95 now what's going to happen here anything that tries to get connected to bob can get through on port 80 Port 80 is the World Wide Web port, and so is port 443 and in between. So what you want to do is just try to stay, you know, confident that whatever port you're using is safe. Anything between 80 and port 443 is probably not something I would ever suggest for you to do at your local home. But if that's what you want to do, it's your network. Somebody asked me to uh, find out what how to set up their ports. Uh, they can so there it is that's how you do port forwarding on the nighthawk mobile wi-fi hot mobile hotspot um, pretty cool device i currently have one and i use it the way it is basically with no ports forwarded um, it's not safe in my opinion but that's you know use as your own discretion and uh, you could get hacked pretty quickly if you don't know how to uh, build a really good you know, protection firewall. I think there's something else here. Um, this is uh, what you call DMZ. And DMZ is the demilitarized zone. So let's say you want to plug the PlayStation 4 in or PlayStation uh, three or whatever you want to plug in and you're having uh, NAT issues uh, network uh, you know networks uh, issues NAT issues and your network issues are causing you know affecting you from playing video games or talking with your friends online you could connect it directly to this and make a demilitarized zone for a specific address so this opens a hundred percent of the ports to everybody outside world so let's say we wanted to go back with 95 so we're going to go here to 95 we're going to press enter and in order to say these changes your mobile router need to restart i don't need to restart it but you see the point it's going to restart this and it's going to put everything on that address open to the outside world all ports are open demilitarized zone this is absolutely specifically only for like a game console never ever 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 do this to your pc your smartphones and other specifically important devices that may have uh sensitive data tablets is a no-no don't ever use this uh for uh, nothing except for a video game console so they got pretty good security and there's not a lot that they can really change through that so um that is a pretty quick video i hope it will help you guys out now if you have difficulty getting into your devices net uh, login page here you can take the back off of your device take a simple push pin and it has a reset to factory default settings at the bottom of the battery. So if you look at it at the bottom of the battery, once you take the back plate off, it'll show you a factory default reset button there. And that's how I was able to basically log back into this AT&T device, which I uh, plan on taking you know, abroad for some uh, stuff for my wife she's going to be taking that with her and doing some cool stuff over there plus she's going to be uh, visiting family and whatnot so she's going to be using this um i have not had any trouble out of it and i like it but let's get back to the port forwarding this is something that you would enable for a video game console not for your pc unless you knew what you're talking knew what she was doing it's going to invite ddos attacks which is something that's happened to me by using port forwarding be careful happy good times with some gaming if that's what you plan on doing uh, and i'm philip 20 peace out